Hi and welcome to this video where I will show you one of my best ideas about my workbench and you will love it. My name is Dennis and I am from Hooked on Wood. And lately I have built the fourth version of my workbench slash router table and it did not change it that much, which is good because it's a lovely workbench. Look at this, my fourth generation of my workbench slash router table. What is special about this version is that this time I used uh, the Inca Clean Sweep dust extractor and inside is an auto router and it's a shame you cannot see it because it's a lovely router but what is nice about this router is that you can change the speed settings from the outside and i created a gap behind this panel so i can hide all the cables and that gives a fairly minimalistic look i use my own drawer system where i will tell you all about in this video but it slides smoothly and it's fairly easy and affordable to make this time, instead of making it myself, I get a very nice plate from Bench Ducks, which you can uh, use to mount and remove your ink fence very easily on your workbench. I hide the duct system inside my cabinet, and this is the inlet for my dust extraction. My duct system is behind these panels, and I separated the two, one outlet for my ink fence, and of course, one for my clean sweep box. And this time I wanted a bigger gap between my cabinet and the workbench top so I could store some tools during work so my workbench top stays clean. And of course, I tried to make it as nice as possible. But although it looks lovely, I made it fairly easy to build. Believe me, with some guidance, even a starter with some essential tools can make this workbench. But I also build it fairly efficiently. This is a fairly cost effective workbench. And the reason is that I needed many new workbenches in my new workshop. And as we know, wood is more expensive than gold nowadays. So I did my best to design a sturdy workbench with as little wood as possible. And my drawer system is one key element that saves money on wood and drawer slides. And in this video, I will explain how to make the system and where you have to think of when you want to make one yourself. First, I want to tell you the background of the system and its consequences on my different workbench designs. Because of my new workshop, I wanted to redo all my workbenches. And for more efficiency, I decided to standardize my drawers and cabinets. And of course, this is not necessary when you only need to make one workbench, but I see it as a benefit when you standardize your drawers. And how I made it, my drawer system gives a lot of flexibility in organizing these drawers in your workbench. And because of this, it's very nice to interchange the drawers instead of creating new ones. But the biggest advantage of this standardization is that it makes building these drawers incredibly efficient because everything has the same dimension. And you only need four templates representing the width of the drawer block to create this standardization. And I made three different sized drawers, one close to 21 cm, 14 and 7 cm in height. And you see, besides the front, these drawers are all the same. So I designed my different workbenches around these drawer blocks. But when my workbench needed to be longer than I could uh, make based on my drawer blocks dimensions, I just created an open space next to it. And I have to see if I place a cabinet door or a vertical drawer or leave it like it is now. And the same is with my last workbench. The space left to my drawers is for my router. And because I use dock holes in my workbench top, I need space underneath it when something accidentally drops in the holes. And I wanted this space bigger so I could store some tools during work so my workbench top would stay clean. And because my smallest drawer is not that high, it was easy to find a suitable height. So even when you standardize your drawers, you will still be flexible enough with your workbench designs. Sorry for the short interruption, but I have a new site that I want to show you. This one is more informative and better organized by topic, and the videos and downloads are more findable. So please visit www.hoekdandwood.online. Okay, so far the background information. To be efficient with wood, I did uh, not make a cabinet and slide it into my workbench frame. Instead, I made a frame of small strips, at least those who are not inside. And to get uh, all uh, my drawers at the same size, I created a template that I use for all my workbenches, which are not more than four strips of wood representing the width 
of the drawer box. But I save these because they are my reference. And this way it's very straightforward to get all the drawer blocks at the exact same size. And using these small strips saves a lot of expensive birch plywood. And you can see that I did not use the bottom in the cabinet. The frame of the workbench is sturdy enough and the rigidity will be back when we add the MDF drawer sets. One last check if everything is square and we can proceed. These MDF sides are the sliders for my drops, and I use 80mm MDF and make a groove 10mm deep. And because I wanted three dimension size drawers that I could flexibly place where I wanted, I decided to make them 7, 14 and 21 centimeters. And the size does not matter that much as long as you multiply the smaller size by 2 and 3. And to decide how far we have to make a groove from each other depends on your drawer design. So let us look at that. All my drawers are precisely the same, regardless of size, and this makes producing these drawers fairly easy and relatively fast because you can create a small series of them. It's just a low frame glued to a 9mm MDF bottom. And the bottom is wider than the drawer frame, so it can slide in the groove of the cabinet side. The height of my drawer frame is 55mm, and including the bottom, this makes a total height of 64mm. We place the front close to 70 mm or multiples thereof, which means that our groove starts at every 70 mm. And remember that the bottom drawer also needs to slide in a groove. And I keep it 50 mm from the bottom for some strength. So we have a groove every 60 mm. Now we can place a drawer where we want. And I said the front is close to 70 mm because if we add a 70 mm front, the drawer on top will not slide. So I made the front 1 mm shorter than that. And the same counts for the 140 and 210 mm fronts. I made them also 1 mm smaller. And I told you that all the drawers were the same, but one exception is the bottom drawer, which should be longer on the underside. And I made these screws with my dado blade, which is very convenient. But in my former workshop, I used my router to make these screws which also works perfectly. But the easiest way, however, is to glue a 9mm thick MDF piece on a 9mm MDF base. And this way you do not need a router or a dado blade, which is more straightforward. And I want to inform you also about the tolerances I use. When you use a template for the width of the drawer blocks, there will not exist too much uh, deviation, so the tolerances can be small. And then I use a space of 2 mm in total, so 1 mm left and right for the bottom of the drawer to slide in the groove. And if this feels too tight, you can enlarge it, but I would keep it under 4 mm. The sides of the drawers are also 2 mm smaller than the inner width of the drawer block. And to align all my drawers, frames and bottoms, I made a template on my small workbench with a micro jig roof grid. And this way you can easily create a small series of drawers that are basically the same. I like a small workbench with these grooves, especially for this kind of work. But for my main workbench, I prefer a surface with dock holes. And the last thing I want to show you is what I did to make it slide smoothly. And the most important thing to let the drawer slide smoothly is to avoid creating too big tolerances. When you leave too much uh, space for the sliders, they will wiggle and get stuck while sliding. And I made a, a slight bevel at the grooves and uh, cleaned the drawer edges. And I also sanded the track at the underside to make it smoother. And I have to say that when you leave it here, your drawers will slide at the best. However, you might want to add some finish to harden the surface. And I used some uh, Rubio Mono Coat for this, but there might be better options available. And because of this, it slides slightly less easily in the beginning as an untreated groove. But it will probably last longer. So there are a lot of advantages creating this drawer system. First, it saves a lot of money on sliders and expensive wood because MDF will be much more affordable. And by keeping the sides of the drawers low, you will also save on this. And I do not think you should stack products on each other in drawers. And if you have to, just create another drawer and place it there. And with this system, you have that flexibility. So lower sides will not have a disadvantage when you do not stack products on each other. 
When you make the side panels accurate, you do not have to align both sides anymore. And all the drawers uh, will be perfectly straight. And this system will save a lot of time because you can make a small series of drawers that with a simple template will fit without adjustment. And the last advantage is the flexibility this system gives you in the future. I started with mostly 14 cm drawers, but I discovered that the 7 cm size fits me better. And because of the flexibility and ease of making and adding extra drawers, I created a workbench towing system over time that now holds my needs best. Well, that was the end of this video. I hope you liked it and found it interesting. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. I do not know if there will be another video this year, so I want to wish everyone a very nice Christmas with family and friends. And of course, a fantastic new year in good health for you and all those you love. Again, thank you for watching and we will see each other next year.